What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Hope everybody's having a great day or night whenever you're watching this. Uh, the NBA trade deadline this year has, I mean, it's been great for entertainment purposes, but some of these trades are highly questionable. We got deals between the Kings and the Pacers, the Blazers and the Pelicans, Blazers and the Clippers. I want to break down a few of these trades and give my thoughts on these because I just think I don't understand some of them. And I think there's huge flaws in a few of these. But uh, before I get into it, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please like the video. Okay, so let's talk about the Kings and Pacers trade first. I got the trade details right here. Uh, the, the Kings traded Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, and Tristan Thompson. And the Pacers traded Demonis Sabonis, Justin Holiday, Jeremy Lamb, and a 2027 second round pick. They basically traded a middle schooler right there. Okay, so... When I look at this, I would have liked this trade if it was Fox that got traded from the Kings and not Halliburton. Fox has been the one that seems like he's upset about being there. Halliburton seems like the guy that actually wants to be there for the rebuild and like is invested in it. So you traded the guy that wanted to be there and kept the one that didn't want to be there. I mean, Buddy Heald, he wanted to go anyway. That was that was going to happen. But I just don't understand it. Like, Maybe the Pacers didn't want Fox and that this was the only way they could do it. But the, for the Pacers, I love this getting Halliburton and like, they needed to just full blown blow it up anyway. Like Sabonis, Turner, Brogdon, Levert, like that stuff was never going to work. So, you know, blowing it up and getting Tyrese Halliburton, like that's a great start towards a rebuild is getting a very, very solid promising young player. So I really like that for them. They traded, you know, with the Kings got Sabonis from the Pacers I might not be as high on Sabonis as some people are. I just, I don't think the fit, I kind of, one thing I do, I question the fit with Fox and Sabonis. They're both lefties and they're both, you know, paint players. Like Fox isn't a jump shooter or anything like that. He's never, never been that kind of guy. Sabonis certainly is not a jump shooter. I feel like it's, the fit just does not seem right to me. Like, I, I don't know. Having Halliburton, the guy that can actually space the floor and stuff with Sabonis, I would have liked that for the Kings. I'd have been like, wow, that's a really good thing. And then for the Pacers, if they would have got Fox, I would have been like, cool. Like they got somebody new, some young, fresh, you know, hopefully energized blood into the team. But I just, I don't know. I, I like this for the Pacers getting Halliburton. I just don't really like it for the Kings trading Halliburton. So, you know, that's, that's my thoughts on that trade. Uh, right there, I, I would, off the rip, I would label the Pacers as a winner of that deal because they got the, Probably the guy that's going to end up being the best player in the deal, in my opinion. Uh, the next one, the Blazers and the Pelicans. This one was mind-boggling as can be because I do not understand the Portland Trailblazers whatsoever. I don't get it, but let's talk about this trade. The Blazers traded CJ McCollum, Larry Nance, and Tony Snell. And the Pelicans traded Josh Hart, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Tomas Sadoransky, a protected first round pick and a future second round pick, right? So one, the Pelicans got the best player in the trade. And I think they got the second best player in the trade. That's where it lost me is, yeah, trading CJ, the, Pel the Blazers needed to do that anyway, but they adding Larry Nance, like killed all, like killed all logic to me. Like he's a qu quality, quality rotational big. Like he's a valuable player that can do a lot for winning teams. And all you got for him was Josh Hart, who's a solid wing, an unproven Nikhil Alexander Walker, who, I mean, maybe that, maybe he takes off in Portland, maybe in change of scenery is good for him. I think situation matters for young guys. And the one in New Orleans just wasn't it for him. Tomas Sanaransky, he, I think he's an expiring contract. He's not going to be on the team in the future. You got a first round pick, but this year it's protected like through like the lottery, basically. So you got like a late first round pick or a mid-level first round pick and then a second for two of your probably five best players i don't know that just i don't understand it i think that they they could have gotten a better trade for both cj and larry nance i love this for the pelicans because now you got brandon ingram Jonas valanciunas Devonte graham uh cj mccollum a big piece to this now larry nance and then when zion gets back if that ever happens this year, 
they've got a like a formidable, formidable looking roster right there. Herb Jones. I like what the Pelicans are doing. I think this kind of saved David Griffin for the time being from being canned in the off season. But this, this is, here's my biggest thing for why I don't understand this for the Blazers. Why? Like we've all wanted them to tear it down for a long time. Now, why are you tearing it down? Like you're letting the guy that's not even more than likely, not even going to be your GM in the future, make all the huge decisions for your future. It makes absolutely no sense. The next GM is going to come in and be like, so I've got Dame hasn't been traded and he's probably not going to trade till the off season. It's like, so I have one move that I can do and it's trading Damian Lillard. You guys did all the other ones and I got scraps for it. Like, okay. Like that's not going to be a very appealing job. And for whatever reason, they, the, I guess the Blazers are thinking that they might be able to, cause they cleared up a lot of cap space in these deals. They might be able to lure somebody to go there. I don't know who needs to tell them this, but nobody's going to Portland. It like never happens. Nobody of like any actual stature goes to Portland. So great city and everything like that, but the players, players just don't go there. And people are definitely not going to go there if they don't think Dame is going to stay or, you know, Dame might just be on the way out. No one's coming. Like their best bet from what I've seen is like sending a huge bag to DeAndre Ayton. But is DeAndre Ayton really changing the, the trajectory of the franchise? I don't think DeAndre Ayton is keeping Damian Lillard happy. I just don't see that happening. The Blazers, you just boggle my mind. Like, how did you have several quality pieces to be traded? And, you know, this I didn't even talk about Norman Powell and Robert Covington for three dudes that never played and a young guy that was drafted at the end of, like, the first or second round and Keon Johnson. Like, that, the Blazers, I don't understand. Like, just commit to the rebuild. You're trading Dame. Don't be like, oh, we're going to try and free up cast space so we can try and lure players. You've never once lured a player that was, like, actually really, really good. You've never lured another star. It never happens. So why is it all of a sudden you think it's going to happen now? Makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, these trades, boggling my mind. I love it for the Pelicans. Hopefully Zion can come back and get healthy. And maybe they can push the play in. And they kind of look like a little bit of a more dangerous team now. Because I like I like that they've got about, on the surface it looks like, or on the, on the paper, it looks like they've got about six or seven dudes that are quality, like either all-star players or quality, quality players. So... I like this for the Pelicans. I love this for the Pacers getting Tyrese Halliburton. You're blowing things up and finally just going for the full-blown rebuild. Kings, I don't understand it. You traded the one guy that actually wanted to be there, and you got a big man that can't guard a parked car, and now your paint's probably going to be even more clogged for De'Aaron Fox. Spacing's probably going to be trash. And trust me, I know what that looks like. I'm a Lakers fan. I've watched Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James share the floor. There is absolutely no spacing when those three are on the floor together. So. Yeah. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. What do you guys think of the trades, your opinions, you know, uh, Kings, Pacers, Blazers, Pelicans fans. Let me know how you guys are viewing this. Some, I would honestly, if you're happy that you got Sabonis, I mean, that, that's cool. You got a, a, an all-star player there, but I just, I don't know. I'm not quite on board with it when you gave up Halliburton. Love this for New Orleans getting CJ and Larry Nance. I think that's a big, big win for them. They just need Zion to come back. Uh, yeah, so if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video. I really, really appreciate it. It helps me get this channel off the ground and provide even better content more often and more frequently for everyone. Uh, yeah, so I'm done here. Blazers and uh, Kings, once again, I have no idea what you guys are doing. Peace.